Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. St. Catherine Sword Police continue efforts to rid Gregory Park of criminals. The St. Catherine Sword Police are continuing efforts to rid the Gregory Park community of criminals intent on wreaking havoc. In recent times, a flare of violence in the era has left residents fearful. Commander of the Division, Senior Superintendent Christopher Phillips, says the aim is to restore peace. SSP Phillips says his team, along with members of the Social Development Commission, SDC and Justices of the Peace, did a walkthrough in the community this week. So we're trying to bring back the community in a sense, to have persons feeling safe to walk the streets again, you know, to interact with the neighbours. Going through that community yesterday, just talking to some of the persons in the community, they are still in fear. We have not had any incident since the last incident on the dike road. But persons are still afraid, you know, to be on the streets late at night and so on. So there are still, you know, persons are still hesitant to be on the outside. They're still not certain if the community is back. And so we have to continue to interact and to reassure the residents in Gregory Park. We will be there to provide the support too. And from the police end, we are also planning further events even after that just to keep the relationship going, the interaction with the community to kind of bring them to a point where they feel comfortable to interact with the police, to share information, and to enjoy their community space again. Those areas are still areas that we have to monitor in terms of the activities of, of the different gangs in those communities. But it is not to that degree where, you know, persons should be in fear to going because we do have a, a dedicated team that focus on those areas. Since of late, it has not been so bad. Since I saw the release, I asked my intel officer to do an assessment of the area. So I'm awaiting um, their findings. But since of late, I know that we have not had, you know, that kind of an incident in there. Plans for advanced to incorporate safe driving course in secondary schools. Director of the Allen Traffic Authority, Kenneth Hart, says plans to incorporate a safe driving course into the national school curriculum at the secondary level are far advanced. He was speaking at the Transport Operators Development Sustainable Services meeting last evening. There are very advanced plans in, in, in that regard. We're working with the Ministry of Education to have a structured program in the high schools from seven grades straight up to 13 grade. And we're also looking at having students, once they reach that age, to be able to do their road code tests from there in high schools. Because, you know, high schools are set up for examination purposes. So we, we want to do that. So our curriculum is in way advanced stages um, with that. That's very important because that is how we're going to change behavior. That's how we're going to influence behavior. And that is how we're going to get better drivers on the road network to adhere to requisite protocols. Education Ministry's intention to end bursa pay schools get backlash from public school bursars. The announcement from the Education Minister on Wednesday that bursar paid school will soon be done away with has not gone down well with the island's public school bursars. Fayval Williams told Jamaica Teachers Association conference meeting that payment for teachers at bursar paid schools are a recurring problem, that a comprehensive audit is being undertaken and that the ministry will soon transition all teachers' payment matters centrally through the ministry. The announcement has left bursars worried that their jobs are in jeopardy, as well as made them angry that there were no consultation or prior communication from the Education Ministry about its intention. Bursars are presented by the National Workers' Union, NWU. General Secretary Granville Valentine said several bursars have contacted the union since Wednesday, concerned about their future and the status of their employment. He just thanks the minister for the manner in which the announcement was made. It is quite unfortunate what is happening. I mean, we have never been informed of this sudden change or this plan from government to restructure or eliminate the bursars or the, the bursaries in the, in the government schools. It is unfortunate that such an announcement is made in the midst of us having dialogue with the minister and the permanent secretary and their team. We believe that as partners, there should be no such incidents such as this, where public pronouncements are made without the knowledge of the workers. I, I can tell you that my phones are inundated with calls all over the island 
people are very very concerned as to what is going to happen where is my future you're talking about over roughly 400 bursars and assistant bursars across the island immediately we are seeking further dialogue up the food chain we are calling on the prime minister to intervene because this is something that could lead to serious unrest and could turn out to be a serious dispute. So we would like to start a dialogue immediately. Versus are people who run the schools in terms of they manage the school, they manage the farm, they manage accounts, payments, etc. What is the alternative? With this announcement, I can assure you that they will have difficulties at going to banks, obtaining loans, and doing business with people because it is the view based on the way the statement came across that the bursars no longer in short order will be in existence the question is does the government have a plan to transfer these professionals somewhere else is there another job for them is it that they will be made redundant what is it 20 million disbursed to Rodel to aid new farmers agriculture minister pernell trosjean has indicated that 20 million dollars has been disbursed to the Rural Agricultural Development Authority Rodder to assist farmers. The funds are the first chance of government's promised support to new farmers through a special incentive program for land preparation services valuing $63 million. Mr. Charles Jr. is encouraging farmers to contact the Rodder office to access funding for use in land preparation. $20 million has been issued to Rodder by the ministry so farmers can now immediately contact their Rodder offices to have uh, their first acre of land prepared free of cost under the Grow Smart, Eat Smart production program. Money received. It is essential for us to do so. The farmers deserve the support. And maybe we should even call it just, it's not just free. It is the kind of empowerment they deserve. And we are going to continue to push for the remaining funds to be distributed in short order. Several vehicles and weapons seized during sweep by police in Brownstone, St. Anne. In giving an update on the operation, Deputy Superintendent of Police in Charge of Operations in Zone 3, Ryan Gale, said the operation was a response to an increase in murders and road crashes in the area. We observed that our murder rate spiked some 15 murders across four weeks. Our road fatalities um, had increased, whereas last year, for the corresponding period, we were at 18 accidents and 18 fatalities. This year, we moved from moved to 20 accidents and 22 accidents and 30 fatalities. So yesterday, myself, by seven other ranks of the JCF and seven members of the municipal council decided to conduct the town sweep in Brownstone. We focused on the things that are affecting us, traffic management, vending, and overall public order. And we checked the vendors where they were to determine whether or not they were operating in a space and in a way that was consistent with law. Similarly, we had teams monitoring the main corridors to ensure that there was free flow and movement of traffic. As a result of this activity, there were several seizures of items, um, exposing goods for sale and vending in areas that were not prescribed vending areas. Uh, several offensive weapons were seized. Several vehicles searched, persons searched, Four persons were summoned for court. Several more are to be summoned. However, they have not come to claim their items at station. And the municipal cooperation and police are working together to have these persons come in for them to be prosecuted for the offenses that we would have detected. Linus Kmar Jordan heads to Guardian Media in Trinidad. Kmar Jordan is leaving the cleaner company and joining Trinidad-based Guardian Media as Managing Editor, effective November 1. Guardian announced the appointment of Jordan on Tuesday afternoon, hours after Jordan tendered her resignation as Editor-in-Chief at Gleaner. 
Jordan will replace Rosemary Sant, who proceeds on retirement, Guardian said. Dr. Karen Hepburn Halcom, Guardian's Managing Director, in announcing the appointment, hailed Jordan as a seasoned executive who underwent a thorough and robust interview process, which included cognitive, behavioral, and technical assessments, the Guardian report on its website. We are pleased to have Kmart join our team given her wealth of experience in leadership in newsroom around the region, said Hepburn Malcolm. Jordan, who hails from Barbados, joined Glena in 2019, becoming the second female editor-in-chief in the Jamaica's media company, 187 years history. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.